Do you guys like who watches the Olympics? Uh, I do enjoy a sport. Clearly, I. I mean, I watched all the skateboarding ones, but like none of them found the secret tape. Uh, mm. most of them couldn't even uh. spell skate. So. Oh. Uh. Yeah, nobody unlocked. Nobody unlocked Spider Man. Nobody unlocked Darth Maul. It was taking boring. What's your favorite Olympic sport? Um, I feel like... the mud wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite Olympic sport is nobody nobody in Tokyo really wanting this to happen anymore. But uh... <laughs> that's a group sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Everyone loses. This may appear to be only monkey business, but in reality, it's very serious, ladies. Zero issues comic podcast. Zero issues comic podcast. Excelsior. Hello, welcome to episode 301! <gasps> Dalmatians! <laughs> the show's just about Dalmatians now. It's a, it's a Dalmatians fan cast called 301. Yeah. yeah. Dalmatians. It's, uh, just dogs Because there's three of us. Everywhere. Yeah. And one Dalmatian. Imagine having that many dogs, like, just the insanity that would happen. Well, I mean, like, after you get 100, I mean, 300 is basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything over a hundred is it may as well be infinite dogs and infinite dog food bowls. I gotta tell you, two can be a handful. So uh, yeah. three hundred and one, yeah. you just have to accept your new life. The amount of uh, cleanup duty in the backyard, good yep. god! Oh, the, it's Horrendous. just poo. the The entire backyard, it's just a mountain of poo, and uh, it will grow ever higher uh, until you can just hop off of the mountain of poo right into space. <laughs> And you will. And you will. 301 Dalmatians in space! Space, space. And I, I, and I hope it doesn't, this new format doesn't awaken anything in you, the listener. <laughs> oh. Too Craig. specific. Too specific. We... <laughs> Anyways, we haven't done this in a bit. I'm Merc. Uh, I don't want to say my name now, but I'm Bry. <laughs> and I'm Kyle, who made Bry go second. <laughs> <laughs> and this is some news. Current Zero News Flash. I guess the the big bit in the news today or in the past two days or so, Scarlett Johansson has sued Disney for uh, Black Widow being released in the theaters and on Disney Plus simultaneously. It is in breach of contract with her contract that she has for, for with Disney for that particular film. Um, and I guess how it works is it, the contract is... This is going to go straight to the theaters. Yeah. Partly what she makes is based on that going into theaters and hitting certain numbers. Box office. And the uh, minute I saw, I saw her name as an executive producer in the credits when I was watching it. Yeah. St- streaming. I was watching it streaming. Um, <laughs> and uh, sorry, Scarlett. Not really. You're rich. Um, not the point. But um, yeah, the minute I saw that, I'm like, oh, so that's definitely why I got delayed this long. And lo and behold. And I guess with that, with their decision, because they did kind of go back and forth of what they were going to do, whether it was going to hit theaters or Disney Plus mm-hmm. or combination and whatever, I guess they had attempted to rene- renegotiate, like her team attempted to renegotiate that contract in March or something when it was seemed like it was heading that way. They're like, look, like the contract is not set up to do this. You're, yeah. you're in breach of contract. Let's renegotiate it. And Disney apparently didn't even really reply. Was like wow. just skirted the issue. Uh, they were non-responsive. So really, yes, she probably has a lot of money already. But it not the point though. It's not the point. It's the contract. Yeah, uh, but it does drive it home when you say like, with this, she is out. An estimated fifty million dollars. Whoa! Oh no! That's a lot of I dough. I mean, that's that's yeah. a lot of dough, man. Oh yeah, for sure. That's that is, and again, it's just uh, well, to Disney responded. So when it came out that mm-hmm. she was suing, uh, Disney released a statement or or 
you know, had a response basically calling her, uh, um, mean her her claims they called them sad and distressing and they accused yeah. her of showing callous disregard for the effects of the covid-19 crisis which um I and mean, i like, think how... they announced that at disney world while it was open yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly exactly yeah yeah exactly <laughs> good lord but i mean like you don't see that that often where they're going to like really just like take that big of a shot at specifically yeah again let's be real like one of the bigger stars in the world yeah. um you know they're really going scorched earth with that and i mean that that didn't go over well it, it, it's it's kind of ridiculous to like to, to make those statements about somebody when it's literally just like suing over what they were promised in their contract yeah you have a contract it's in writing this is what you do you broke the contract done like that's how it yeah. goes. I, I believe she uh, confirmed since then that she will definitely not be appearing as Black Widow again. Go figure. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like her her contract is over after the nine films, and that's it. Like she is she's done with Marvel films. Um, Kevin Feige um, did not officially respond with anything. It's not really his purview. It's not like he's not the contract guy or anything. But it's just uh, reports. You know, it's, reports. It's been reported that he was quite upset and ashamed that that is how it went and when it kind of popped up he was like why can't we just fix this and disney did not fix it and now there's that and i'm reminded a bit of the james gunn situation where oh, you know reportedly he he was horrified about the situation and was like desperately trying to get them to like change their mind on this and they wouldn't so I get that the like the actors. I mean, there's new characters coming in and out, and you can always swap them out. But it's like one person is kind of the architect of like this stuff in a big way, and it seems like you're pissing him off a lot, which doesn't seem smart. But what do I know? I'm not Disney. Uh, to keep on on track with MCU stuff, there oh, there's also a date that's been announced for Hawkeye the series, mm. um, which has like obviously uh, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye and. Kate Bishop, uh, who is played by uh, Haley Steinfeld. Right. Um, that is November 24th is the official release date for that. It was kind of back and forth of like they didn't know if it was coming before the Eternals or after the Eternals or how that was falling. Although What If comes out like August 11th. So that's pretty soon. So yeah, that comes out November 21st. So yeah, like Kate Bishop, uh, Hawkeye, Echo, um, is going to be in it as a character uh, by uh, played by Aliquay Fox from Black Widow, uh, Yelena Belova. She's in this as well, which I didn't... I think I heard it, but not knowing the character until you see Black Widow. And then you're like, oh, that's who... Okay, that's what's going on with that. Right. Um, and the rumor, the rumor mill going around right now is that Vincent D'Onofrio is going to appear as Kingpin from... Really? His Daredevil days. Yeah. Oh. Which I would be like, yes, th thank you very much. There are persistent rumors that nobody is is uh, disputing, it seems. So, I yeah. mean, I mean, like, if that's the case, I'm very, very happy because I, why in God's name would anyone else be in that role after that performance? Come on. Oh, yeah. perfect. Absolutely. And, and if you're going to use a character like the Kingpin, Hawkeye and Hawkeye are kind of the perfect street level characters to, uh, to exactly. go up against them. Yep. I, I just hope that Kingpin had better be going up against some tracksuit uh, Draculas, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we that's, go. That's, that's right, bro. On. Bro. The Nancy Boys, it was announced, is uh, is coming to Amazon as a six-episode limited series. So Nancy Boys based on the Neil Gaiman uh, novel, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so Neil Gaiman is writing along with Sir Lenny Henry. Uh, so they've announced that Mr. Nancy, uh, Nancy has been cast, and he's going to be played by Delroy Lindo. Yeah, which is which cool. is very cool. That's good. Yeah. Casting. It's very yeah. cool. It's sort of weird. Was, like you see, it's like it's casting. It's just like <gasps> it's not gonna be because I'm pretty sure Orlando uh, Jones uh, like nuked that bridge. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, that show it, ended anyway. So exactly, exactly. And it's not you know they'll, well, they'll and not. Really that's that's the weird thing is like Neil Gaiman and his TV exploits and movie exploits can be so hit and miss and yeah. then I go for a little yes. bit and like i enjoyed parts of i like i was a big american gods fan like for the book and then the first season is amazing oh and yeah really it just seemed to go a little down and then the third one i didn't even finish yeah it was it's not like, good i 
I'm not even enjoying this at all. The, I the don't thing even know what's going on. That that watching that third season again, there's still stuff that I enjoyed in it, but it felt like very much like it was just here's who's left, and that's like yeah. the cast. Of, it yeah. felt like there was like nobody in the show. It felt like it was such a big show before, and it felt like literally there was like five people. Everyone else yeah. had just like. They've hemorrhaged so many cast members, and it it just felt so small, and it was such a sad whimper of an ending for that show, which is really sad, but uh, Orlando Jones was right, that's all we can say. As well, there's some ca- casting for the Ahsoka series coming to Disney+, Plus, I guess, so uh, it was rumored, and then I guess Rosario Dawson posted on Instagram confirming it, that uh, they've cast uh, Mina Masood as uh, Ezra Bridger, and Lars Mikkelsen brother of mads as i as, mm-hmm. as i do believe mm-hmm. as uh, as thrawn as like admiral thrawn so these are characters that haven't been done in live action before or have been done in cool. animation and other stuff especially thrawn thrawn's thrawn's been a thing for yeah what 20 years 30 years maybe yeah yeah exactly like a big character I mean, like, in the books finally canonized and now finally live action like that's pretty cool and I feel like you do you do a character live action. You're, there's going to be so much oomph behind that, right? I mean, it's, they're really gonna. That's going to be a big deal. And like Lars Mikkelsen, like fantastic. It's going to be. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And just what they've been doing with uh, like the Mandalorian, and just how they set up that universe, and just continuing that with Ahsoka, like it just. Oh, for it's sure. A, a new way, a new way to do Star Wars that I think is actually probably better than just continuing official star wars movies kind of thing yes yeah and they did leave off like with rebels and everything and like the animated shows like she was trying to find ezra uh with sort of how they left her character and so the Mm -hmm. fact that like they're it's literally going to be a direct sequel to the animated shows in live action that's super cool (laughs) it would be very cool to be a kid who had who had actually like grown up watching uh clone wars and rebels like that would be good for that good for them is what i'm saying yeah Instead, instead of an adult middle-aged man, <laughs> <laughs> still fun. Welcome to the warm-up. Okay, we are doing spoiler alert, but uh, obviously an Olympic kind of themed episode. Uh, what we have for a warm-up was a, a topic suggestion from a friend of the show, Jay Bose, who is, um... Hey, Jay! Hey, Jay Bose! Yo, he Bose. is, uh... Nope, that's you can him. check... You should check him out on uh, Instagram. He does a lot of uh, action figure toy photography. Uh, it's Jay Botography, so J-B-O-tography. Um, very cool stuff. Uh, we I talk about toys with him all the time, and uh, we're, we might be terrible influences on each other. So um, you should check out his his check out his toy photography, and he can be bad influence on you too. Buy some toys. It is I don't it know. is pretty fun. It oh, is pretty stuff. fun. But uh, I do have a beef with him that he made a comment uh, that if I die, he would take my place. If I die terribly or something, <laughs> he would take my place. <laughs> uh, to that, I say uh, fuck you. <laughs> It's all about that Odin build a figure, really, is the thing. <laughs> what if you die peacefully? Oh, he wants to like get his hands sleep. on it. What if and, and there's, hands there's on no, you know, there's no suspicion of foul play because that's how we do it. Because it's poison. Yeah, exactly. Look, if you want me off the podcast, just say so. <laughs> we do a comic book podcast. Mer- Merc will reveal to have been alive the whole time and plotting his revenge, and then uh, that'll be episode four hundred. We get yeah, a big spectacular, you know. Double sized mm-hmm. episode. Um, anyway, so he suggested Butler Olympics, what, which is what it says on the tin. It's uh, butlers <laughs> competing. Butlers competing in uh, in a series of events. Okay, um, who so are course, our butlers? Alfred, Mister Alfred Pennyworth, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mister Edwin Jarvis, uh, so uh, of the Avengers. Lurch from the Adams family. Oh, uh, Lurch! All right. Duckworth from Ducktales. Duckworth. I'm I'm su- I'm surprised uh, you don't have Joffrey from Fresh Prince or Mr. Butler Tron from Clone High, but okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeffrey Jeffrey from Fresh Prince was the next one. I forgot about Mr. Butler Tron, so guess what? Now he's on there. We're gonna have to go real fast. <laughs> the first uh, event uh, is the Super Clean and Press. In this competition, Batman, say for as an example, has has come back from a hard night. He went to a, a soiree and then took the took to the night uh, as, as Batman. So you have to clean any blood stains, repair any like cuts, Catwoman claws, 
after a rooftop encounter, who knows, um, out of his bat suit, get it pristine uh, for his next night patrol. As well, you got to clean and press his tux. He might have got uh, some wine thrown in his face from uh, from uh, any number of uh, eligible women. A saucy women. interaction. Oh, dear Lord, yes. you don't throw wine. That's going to stain everything. Exactly. So uh, so Bruce has decided to uh, take a seat in his uh, bat computer chair and have himself a nice little micro sleep, which could last anywhere from one minute to, I don't know, half an hour. Hard to say. Seven minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you gotta, they got to get all of this done in time before he wakes up and uh, who do you think would would get done first it's sort of like a like a bake-off show or they're all doing it at the same time and you just got to get done first i mean for for something like this i i don't think you're gonna beat alfred honestly i think he's he's got the most experience it's gonna be an alfred alfred or a jarvis thing really yeah mr butler tron can't he's he's a mess (laughs) <laughs> yeah he's not gonna be much help duckworth is like some he's sometimes a ghost so i don't think he's gonna really be be able to be corporeal to lift things lurch zero chance and like jeffrey no, not gonna happen jeffrey i don't think jeffrey really like he didn't seem to work all that hard frankly he was mostly just like sassing off and uh i mean that's what brothers actually do they're just sass machines yeah. and they don't work for nobody but you so what are we thinking here? I think an Alfred is the champion. I mean, he trained his whole life for this. I think Alfred. Yeah. Fair. I think it's a natural since it's just, it's Batman. So next we have what is really just a cooking show uh, competition. Uh, the Avengers and or the Justice League, whatever the super team is, they've just vanquished a cosmic threat. Uh, they are starving. So they are uh, the Quinjet or whatever their vehicle is, is, is coming back to headquarters they're going to be here in an hour. Uh, there's a wide variety of team. You have to prepare an elaborate meal that's going to please every single member of that team. So who do you think has the cooking chops to satisfy an entire team of heroes? I think that's a Mr. Jarvis one. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Al- Alfred, is he's good at uh, cooking for one. Uh, yeah. You know, opening up a can of Chef Boyardee, Chef Lonely Hearts, soup for one. Yeah. That food never gets eaten, so you know he's probably just like literally just reheating the same thing the entire week. He doesn't need to work. He, that he's hard. using prop food. Yeah, yeah. Like in a McDonald's <laughs> commercial, <laughs> there's glue on it and it's cold. Well, you know, Bat Batman's just going to be having like protein shakes and and things like that. That's yeah, pretty much. Yeah, high protein, high carb sort of yeah. stuff. Jarvis is yeah. is cooking food for Thor. You never know who's going to show up, That's and all right. of a sudden, like there's, there's like the West Coast Avengers are here, and oh, we have to throw something together for Beast and Wonder Man, and you know everybody's got very particular tastes, and he Jarvis is all over it. Hercules is there, and he's Paleo this week, but like who fucking knows next week? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rick Jones is constantly there stealing food from the fridge, so he's got to contend with that at the same time, and he always mm-hmm. pulls it off. So I mean, you know, and he's also good- like. He's going into the cloakroom and going through people's stuff, trying to get just pickpocket money out of stuff. Yeah, that's fair. Because it, it's Rick. Lurch, you shouldn't eat anything Lurch prepares, for sure. Uh, Duckworth, Duckworth probably does a fine job, but nothing exceptional. Mr. Butlertron, no, no way in hell. No, uh, nope. Jeffrey? Jeffrey, I mean, like, usually, the most, of the most of the time you see anyone cooking, it'll be like, you know... Phil's mom or something's in town or something like that. It's not going to be... Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed him doing that much cooking, to be honest with you. So, I mean, that, that seems pretty fair. Yeah, they got a lot of takeout in, in Bel Air. Unless uh, <laughs> unless you're tossing somebody out the door. I don't know if uh, Jeffrey's going to have true. much of a chance. True. And even uh, then, that's right. Uncle Phil. <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. What did he do? He just gets paid and uh, <laughs> he gets a, <laughs> he he to give... The door. He gets to give these like these rich these rich people a bunch of shit all day and just get paid mm. for that. So that's great. He's yep. doing good. That's he doesn't nice need job. to win a medal. He already has the greatest prize of all. Uh, event number three, which I'm calling Master Bruce's Bedtime. I don't know if I want to hear this. So you need to tell. So it's bedtime. You need to tell a story or an anecdote or a profound uh, statement. Or something that really settles the nerves of a very cranky 40-year-old Bruce Wayne so he can get a good night's sleep, so he can do his best. Again, Alfred would seem to have the advantage here, but let's, you know, I think we need a... I'm leaning Lurch for this one. <laughs> really? I was going to oh, say, yeah. Lur- whatever Lurch says, you're just going to see Bruce, like, holding the 
the sheets up and just staring at the ceiling for the rest of the night. Like that's how Bruce Wayne likes to sleep, <laughs> terrified with true. his eyes open. Yeah, that's, that, no, that's a yeah, good hanging thing. upside down like a bat. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, I could get behind that actually. Though he might, he might be like in bed, and then Lurch comes in to talk. He's like Solomon Grundy. No, I think, I think you know, Lurch, Lurch is a, a spooky guy, and Bruce. I think, I think Lurch would try to tell him guy. a nice story, but what he thinks is a nice story is a terrifying story, and that's what that's what Bruce really wants deep down. That is what he wants. Yep. Good point. Yep. Good point. Because that's All who right. he is. You're right. Lurch takes it. Event number four, uh, the final event. Uh, who makes a nice cup of tea? Ah, uh, Jeffrey. Here's what Jeffrey can do. Yeah. Because he's British. Yeah. You're right. He is yeah. British. It's true. <laughs> he probably makes That's a damn right fine cup of tea. Well, you, you know, go. he seemed he was a very uh, and again they all are. Obviously, they all are very like cultured, refined gentlemen. But uh, Jeffrey, I feel like would take that very seriously. Nothing much else, but he take that very seriously. So yeah. no, they all. So all all four of these these gentlemen get gold medals, I guess, in their respective uh, competitions. The only ones mm-hmm. who completely got washed out here: Duckworth and Mister Butlertron. Uh, who have to uh, clean up the stadium. Ghost and a robot. Yep. I, I don't think they're going to do a very good job, actually. They're not good butlers. No, no. <laughs> Get the be- the butlers that don't do much to do the most work. Sounds good. What the f***? Thank you again, Jay Boas, and uh, we are moving on. Moving on to... Uh... To the non-Butler Olympics. No butlers allowed in these Olympics. <laughs> Get out. That's what I say. If you're a butler. If you're a superhero, welcome. Welcome to your Olympics, the Superhero Olympics. The 2020 the real Superhero is. Olympics. Yes. Yes, it's 2020. Uh, so I think how we're doing this, if you're familiar at all with how we do like March Madness where we... It's completely different. No. It, it, there's a bit of a, a similar where we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna pick certain events, whether they're amazing events, bizarre events, <laughs> events, Olympic events that don't actually happen anymore. Um, and then we'll we're each gonna pick a character, and then we'll have a quick discussion about who would win that event. Okay. So who wants to who wants to uh, pick the first event? I want to go first. For the very first event, it is going to be the uh, the Olympic classic, the hot dog eating contest. <laughs> I wrote that down too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wrote it down. Too. I did. I was wrote it down just a minute ago. Uh, like that'd be a funny one as a joke, and he already had it. Oh, we're in sync. We're we're each going to submit uh, one of the people that we've chosen uh, to enter this contest. Uh, I mm. am going to submit D Man. Ooh. Wearing the brown and different shade of brown colors. I am submitting Foggy Nelson. <laughs> Ooh. I'm really struggling between Jughead or Mattery or Lad. Jughead or uh, Mattery or Lad. Jughead. Uh, I gotta go with Did Jughead. you actually have them on a list? Or did you yes. just think of it now? Yes! Oh, you bastard. <laughs> All right. It's a big list, but yeah, I'm going with Jughead. I'm going <laughs> yeah. with Jughead. My list was the Marvel Universe Encyclopedia and DC Who's Who. My list yeah. was internet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's no, it's it's a contest, but not really because it's Jughead. It's true. Yeah. I think that, yeah. I mean, he was on my list for, for this one inevitability. So. <laughs> oh, I see. I see how it works. Yeah, you have to have a ringer. Uh, I think D-Man, D-Man might have a heart issue as he's... Oh yeah, he down. he he may he may temporarily die in the middle of this and need to be revived. Yep. Someone yep. give him mouth to mouth. No, there's still most of a hot dog in there. <laughs> He's just got a wiener hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, we don't want to touch that. He needs some just sort of uh, some sort of hot dog vacuum to to be able to to suck the hot dog out of his mouth, <laughs> or he could die. Uh... See. Foggy, I feel like, would do pretty well, but he, I feel like he probably was eating a bag of chips on the way to the competition, and that sort of... <laughs> yeah, he gets full, is the thing. Yeah, he does. It's not about Jughead. speed, like, he wants to actually taste it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a foodie. Jughead just is a, a black hole. <laughs> Jughead is actually dipping them in water, like like you see the, uh, the, the competitors do to soften the bun. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's, and they're just sliding <laughs> down. Hands down, that's Jaghead is a gold. Yes, yes. So who who takes silver, Foggy or D-Man? I think uh, I think someone else does because D-Man has a heart attack and Foggy has to <laughs> resuscitate him. <laughs> yeah, Foggy's a responsible guy, I think, so. But then there's uh, a dispute because when he resuscitated him, he actually ate one of his hot dogs. So he's like, which who act- did that hot dog count? You know, the Olympics are nothing without a scandal, right? Yeah, so exactly. every Olympics has a scandal, and this one's hot dog gate. So <laughs> they actually both get disqualified because oh. they were exchanging hot dogs. And there's a Jughead takes gold, silver, and bronze. Yeah. And then asks, "Are you gonna? Are you? Are you gonna eat the rest of those hot dogs? Uh, that half the hot dog you pulled out of D Man's throat? Are you gonna eat that?" <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, next, I'm gonna go with uh, rhythmic gymnastics. That's the one where they're dancing across the floor, really. Like, they're doing, like, yeah, they're doing, like, rhythm, yeah, like, gymnastics. All right. Rhythmically. Rhythmically. All right. Rhythmically. I am choosing Beast. Because I want to oh. see, I want to see a big blue hairy guy just really going for it uh, on that, on that dance floor. Yeah, because so he would. Beast. He would. Absolutely he would. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with Tin of the Metal Men. Oh, that's cool. I am going to go with plastic man oh because <laughs> it's gonna get wild in here I, f- I feel like you have a you have much better tin <laughs> <laughs> but just think of the noise on the mat it would be mm. kind of gross just a yeah just yeah yeah rubbery rubbery slap noise just yeah well you see okay but the thing is they they do often deduct deduct points for uh for, for bouncing off the mat. And who's bouncier than Plastic Man? Bouncing Boy, obviously. But who else is bouncier <laughs> than Plastic Man? I almost put Bouncing Boy on my list. Um, <sighs> he, might, he might lose a point or two. Um, but, he's so, but he's got so much flair, I think, that otherwise that maybe that would make up for it, right? He and he's do, the only yeah. one who's actually dressed for it already. That's true, yeah. <laughs> That's true. But you know what? Well, uh, what you wear at the Olympics? What you wear at the Olympics? That's being questioned now. I think mm. it's... Oh, okay. Making yeah, him yeah. wear that is maybe not a yeah. good idea. Beast Beast had just had his, his, like, you know, his little shorts on, but he decided to just tear them off and just go... <laughs> El fresco. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, yeah. let the wind rush against all of his yeah. eagles everywhere. Yeah. El Dante. I think, Be- I think Beast would perform pretty well, actually. It would be... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Potentially horrifying to watch, but he's very agile and... Uh, I feel like uh, you know he, he. You think he's at his la- in his lab working on like science all night, but he's just working on his routine. Mm. It's just real love. Beast knows what the judges are looking for and is able to to scientifically figure out the the best routine. Yeah, like, here's what's going to get me the maximum score. Uh, yep. I, I think uh, Plastic Man and Tin, both uh, sort of goofier characters, might get a little distracted. They might see there's a hot dog eating contest over there. This I gotta see. <laughs> That's fine. I was going to say Beast might get distracted because he tends to be a bit of a weird ladies man that he's like, all of a sudden he would like just jump on the, the judge's table and start hitting on one of the judges inappropriately. And you're like, yeah. oh. Maybe I feel like he would do that right approach. before. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. And that, then rips his pants and off. And then he rips off his shorts off. Yeah. Like, oh. And weirdly enough, I think it might work in his favor. He's quite charming. Yeah. The German judge gave him a 10 right away. Yeah, yeah. Take that, Germany. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? I'll, I, I'll, I'll put mine out as I think Beast would win. Yeah, I, I agree. Did I agree, Beast. I mean, I'm biased, but I agree. Uh, I want to say Plastic Man would probably be silver. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tin, tin gets the bronze, and he's very upset about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's horrified. He's, <laughs> this was my cousin. <laughs> Next event is I did go through a bunch of them, ones that have been discontinued and uh, they, they're not don't happen anymore. One that occurred that does not anymore. Obstacle swim. Wow, I want that <laughs> back in the Olympics. It sounds. Amazing. I know, so do I. It's like literally like climbing over stuff, jumping in the water, swimming around things, underneath boats, uh, up and up and around, and literally an obstacle course. In water. It sounds like a Japanese game show. Yeah. 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 I am putting in uh, Modoc ah. as my... Uh... 
Okay. He's got a he's got a certain amount of propulsion. For this one, I'm gonna choose uh, Superman. <laughs> okay, you I choose went, go- like I I choose God. <laughs> yeah. No, no, wait for it. We're gonna have to hash this out. We're gonna have to hash this out. So uh, I have I have a, a very good reason I chose Superman for this one. But uh, continue. Okay. Okay. Because uh, um, he can do everything. Yeah. That's. <laughs> Yeah. Tough choice. Because <laughs> you have to you, you have to burn your Superman at some point. Yes. <laughs> There's the one that I really yeah. want a gold in. Uh I'm I'm gonna go with uh, with Casey Jones for my Ah oh, nice. Nice. Oh. Because um, prove to me, prove to me that he doesn't have a surfboard in that hockey bag. Or some flippers. And a little snorkel. Yeah, he, I think he does. I think he does. He's prepared for everything. He's, you just uh, see him moving really slow, like in a snorkel. Just dog paddling. He's dog paddling because he doesn't know how to swim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. A friend of mine called him played against sportsman uh, one time to, <laughs> to piss me off. But oh, it's accurate. Yeah. It's accurate. So I'm going to say it right now. I, th- I threw Superman in there as a dark horse because uh, it's, it's obstacles. He has to swim through obstacles. If you played Superman 64, you know that he's very bad that, at that. That's a good point. <laughs> Flying through rings. He's bad at that. So I think he doesn't win. I'm just He's got I bad threw him in there detection, to lose. Yeah. This is this I is I would say he between gets, Casey Jones and Modoc. <laughs> he gets disqualified because he ends up flying like through one of the boats or yeah. f- ends up flying over and they're like disqualified you're flying you have to stay in. No, the I'm water. swimming. I'm sw- I'm swimming in the air. Yeah. Lex it's Luthor. Raining. Lex Luthor is actually one of the judges. He's like fly through my rings and he just burnt right through a wall. It's uh <laughs> Right into some green right. smoke that's obscuring the uh, the area. The, I, don't, the I don't know where it came from. All right, so Soup's Superman is out, so it's Modoc versus Casey Jones. Dear Lord. <laughs> Whichever of them doesn't drown is going to win. Modoc's face down. Help me! Help me! Yeah. <laughs> Spin yeah. me over! Casey Jones didn't take... He didn't take the hockey bag off before getting in the water, which... <laughs> that's foolish. <laughs> he just di- He jumped in and just disappeared. Anyway, Full clothes. Got, he's got it all on. He's got his boots. Yeah. Wow. He's got a hockey mask and a snorkel on top of the hockey mask. It's not actually doing <laughs> and anything. It's just fashion. Wh- what is that saying? Down to Casey Jones' locker? That, Ooh. <laughs> because of that, I'm giving Modoc the win. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's really weird. But yeah, Modoc, Modoc does not do well, but by default... Which he's yep. taking. Yeah. He's taking his absolute victory because he's Modoc. He's loving yeah. it. Yep. Loving it. So he he gets gold and the others are dead. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or disqualified. Next up is going to be it's Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Yeah, that's right. It's like the uh it's like the the you know, the karate or jujitsu event, but it's Tai Chi. So it's way slower. Kyle, who's your who's your choice? I'm gonna go with Bumblebee, the Transformer. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! All right, uh, top that. I'm gonna go with Ghost Rider. Okay, Ooh. hop in. I'm gonna go Dazzler. I'm going with Dazzler. Oh, Dazzler! Yeah, I'm surprised you you kept Dazzler out of the uh, the rhythmic gymnastics. Yeah, really. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get past uh, that imagery of just beast. <laughs> That's fair. Couldn't get past it, so had to had to be that. So I guess all three of them are uh, they're gonna have to go up against some sort of competitor, uh, like a like a wooden training dummy, like the one from Tekken. <laughs> do they or do they just do the movements? That's usually your Tai Chi. You're, there's no opponent. You're just doing the movements. So it's who can go the slowest. It's a slow race. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just picture uh, Ghost Rider from the second movie where in the thing he would just Oh yeah. wave her back and forth and his hair or his flame on the head would just go back and forth. <laughs> like, I'm just doing tai- just throw the hands in the front of it and be just doing tai chi the whole time. Yeah. Nicholas Cage tai chi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh Dazzler makes light effects. I mean, can she make slow light effects? It seems like she'd be more energetic. A slower version of her stage routine with, like, the lights just sort of fading. That could be pretty, pretty... Or would she get disqualified for going too fast? Yeah, that's the problem. Slow it down, Dazzler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, she did all of her uh, training in, like, Studio 54, so, uh, 
She might be under a performance enhancing substance, and uh, I don't think it's going to help in this competition. Actually, I think that's fair. No. And I, I think Bumblebee, Bumblebee, Bumblebee would just be like, uh, I know, I know, I know, Bumblebee, <laughs> Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> yeah, just stuck midway through transformation. Tra- no Transformer seems incredibly graceful. Whether it be the cartoons or the movies or whatever, they're always just falling all over the place and just yeah. stepping on stuff they shouldn't be. But if he gets stuck in mid kind of movement, it looks like he's just found the spot well, in Tai Chi. And he's yeah, like, yeah. How slow can you go? That slow. Become become move. the car. Exactly. Oh my God, he's perfectly still. It's stasis. I feel, I feel like Ty- Tigatron. It, we're not. It, we're. It's not. Yeah. We're not. I wish. I wish it were Tigatron. Tigatron would be your man in this competition for mm-hmm. sure. I think. I think Ghost Rider. Honestly, yeah. That, that that slow flame is just hypnotic. It is very true. I mean, Dazzler's got those fast sparks. What about some slow sparks? I feel like you know it's all about commitment, and Nicolas Cage will commit. So, um, you know, you or, can't... Or get committed. Or get committed, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. And and part of, part of uh, you know, his relaxation techniques during that time is uh, Tai Chi. So he got quite mm-hmm. good at it. Well, you can only scratch at the door for so long. I, I think Ghost Rider wins. I, I think I, so, I think too. That's, that the, that's the conclusion we've arrived at. I think, I think Ghost Rider wins, Bumblebee silvers, and Dazzler is disqualified for, you know, you know... <laughs> That's fair. Performance enhancing drugs. That's right. <laughs> um, so my next round let's do some volleyball. Solo volleyball? Yes, solo volleyball. <laughs> yes. Well okay, we could pick we could pick how about we come up with uh with a partner for each of our our one. Oh, okay. Because volleyball is a is uh, a I think you can play that with two people, right? Yeah. Well, sure, if why Mario not? Mario sports games have taught me anything, you can play volleyball with two people. I think so. So fair. I'm choosing uh, Daisy and <laughs> Birdo. No. <laughs> so the one the one person I had left was uh, Carnage. Uh, and who go who goes better with Carnage than uh, Venom? It's gonna be Venom and Carnage Boys playing volleyball. Venom. I'm gonna combo uh, Big Red McLean. Oh dip. <laughs> King of the North Woods. King of the North Woods from the Fletcher look him Hanks up. comics. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Oh, you'll <laughs> be glad you did. The lumberjack extraordinaire, uh, and I'm gonna team him uh, with Newton the Centaur from the Hercules cartoon. Oh, it's Morty! Oh. <sighs> volleyball, volleyball! Hey Merc! Hey Merc! Hey Merc! Hey Merc! <laughs> Serve the ball! Serve the ball! My main is going to be Namor, the Submariner. Oh, uh. and I think it's very important because clearly you need to have those bikini bottoms to do volleyball, from what I from what I've heard. So he's he's prepared. Uh, mm-hmm. And his his uh, his partner is Randy Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Y- yes, please. But he's in the character of uh, of the cousin at in the vacation. Yeah. Series. No, that's yeah, that's good. I think that's good. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's shitters full. Shitter's full. This time, this time, I think it's going to be this bizarre sort of triangle shaped net. It's good. It's going to be three teams <laughs> fighting each other. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> dong, dong. They back yeah. and forth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they're all disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> On what basis? They can't all be doping, right? <laughs> Carnage and Venom just kill everybody. I mean, real life uh, Randy Quaid is definitely on a whole bunch of stuff. Randy Quaid just just started talking. He started talking and Carnage was like, this guy's making a lot of sense. <laughs> And then Big Red McLean started a fight with Namor. Yeah. Because he just started to suck him one. Pow! Mm-hmm. Randy Quaid is accusing the volleyball of uh, being, you know, bugged by the government or something. So he shoots it like <laughs> it's deflated. Yeah. And, and as we all know and established last episode, Venom went to space. So he's not even there. Yeah. That's true. That's why he went to space. He didn't want to play volleyball. <laughs> Venom, Venom doesn't want to play volleyball. That's a very fair... Uh... It's a very fair, uh, it's very fair. So Carnage is just sad there by himself. So there's like sad yeah, crying it's, Carnage. Yeah, it's the, it's the symbiote and it's Cletus, Cletus Cassidy. <laughs> and they're like, well, I guess we could s- split off and yeah. Yeah, you but, go. But, but Cletus Cassidy, notably terrible at volleyball. 
That's true. And uh, Big Red McLean just uh, socks him in the jaw. But I feel like literally everyone else has been disqualified, so... <laughs> doesn't matter how terrible you are. Hooray! I, I don't so what know. Is that, what does I don't that know us? what's happening what is... anymore. <laughs> They just they they cut to uh they cut to someone uh recapping the uh the hundred meter dash. Yep. <laughs> uh Randy and Randy just... Quaid stole all the medals and ran away, so Yeah. Yeah. So Canada like wins. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next event. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Please. Uh for the last event I am choosing and this is an actual event. It it doesn't happen anymore. Solo synchronized swimming. How? What? <laughs> Why? It's an actual event, but you are synchronized with music. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought you were like it's watching how, the tape. Is how they explained it. I, I Solo wasted Namor. Swimming. I wasted Namor. That's fine. <laughs> and I'm going to, before I say who I picked as my character, let me just explain how we got to there. Uh, I recently just ran into a uh, friend of the show, Pat, when I was out uh, out in a boat. Yeah. And uh, it reminded me that that he had lent me a stack of comics. A while, like a year ago, we did an, uh, like an adaptations episode. And he messaged me. He's like, hey, I got a bunch of these. Like we talked about Dune by Bill Sienkiewicz and a bunch of others. And so he lent me a, a little stack of them. And I realized I had not got them back to him yet. I just poked my head in there earlier who would, today. Who would do just that? Like, who would do that? <laughs> yeah, horrible, horrible. Going through, and uh, lo and behold, what comic did I come up with that uh, Pat had lent us and is now my character? Pope John Paul II. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Technically fictional comic, character. comic book character, Pope John Paul II. Yeah, exactly. That's Ave amazing. The next, the only other character on my list uh, is Green Arrow. So, <laughs> Pope John Paul versus Green Arrow. Give it a try, Ollie. All right, and the only character I had left, I'm going to hold it up. Maybe you can see it. I've circled it. Uh, it's Impulse. Oh, oh my. <laughs> uh, he's real fast, but is he real? You know what? He does, he probably would have a very good sense of timing. Yeah. If but... it's like a song he's into, if he's if it's a song he's into, I feel like he could really really get it done but uh you know it depends if it's his choice or not yeah i mean like he, he might be he might be waiting for the for the you know the hit to do something you know something uh synchronized with the music and just all right i'm gonna go have a sandwich while this yeah oh i missed i missed my cue do you like impatiently tap your feet underwater because he found a way mm. he's, he's causing big waves actually they're just like the audience is getting soaked that's what i was figuring any movement he does is going to create like tons yeah. of waves. It's you're just watching him like it's just water going everywhere. Yeah, at no point is he actually in the water. He's just you know pacing on top of it, never actually entering yeah, the water. I like that. And I feel like Pope John Paul just is standing in the shallow end, not moving because he's got his <laughs> robe on and it's so wet and it's so heavy, oh, and he's just yeah. saying, I, "I, I, I don't swim very well." And all the all the sinners that keep getting into the pool are immediately baptized. Yeah, yeah. He he blessed he blessed the water the whole time. He he blessed the water, but that's what we call it when Pope John Paul pees in the pool. I mean, I bless the water every time I go swimming. He's an old man; he can't help it. Um, <laughs> exactly. Am I talking? Who am I talking about? Uh, anyway, <laughs> Green Arrow. I feel like he brings the whole. He's got his hood on, and he's got his quiver full of like. <laughs> arrows in the water they're spilling he's out. not yeah like the thing is filled with water and it's throwing his balance off and he's just trying to eventually he's like getting dragged under by the weight of it and he's just desperately trying to um to, to keep his head above water i mean he didn't really think this through so really nobody got very far yeah nobody yeah. everyone man superheroes should not be in the olympics i think is what we have figured out <laughs> we've established <laughs> yes and Olympic athletes sure. should not be superheroes, despite the fact that a lot of superheroes who uh, who don't really have powers are uh, trained to the level of Olympic athletes. Mm-hmm. They've decided exactly. to to use their Olympic athlete level training to uh, do other things. It's very strange how some of these people, some of these uh, these superheroes, specifically entered competitions that they had not trained for whatsoever. Yes, yes. 
And uh, that's how I, that's how I like it. All right. Well, I think we've reached. Uh, th- these are the closing ceremonies. That's the music. That's the music that they play. That's the music. Because the because the music <laughs> they played at the actual Olympics opening games is all copyrighted video game music, apparently. So we can't use yeah. any of that. <laughs> and it's all done on mouth trumpet. Yeah. Uh. So who are we? I'm Merck. You can find me at MerkAsylum.ca. M-E-R-K-A-S-Y-L-U-M.ca. Uh, Merck on Facebook, Merck and not like astronaut on Instagram. I'm I'm Brycotic. You can check out my comic at welcome to hereafter.com and I'm on Instagram at B R Y K O T Y K. My name is Kyle Lees, and you can check my stuff out at thekylees.com or the Kyle Lees on Facebook, Instagram, etc. 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 Hey, we're all singers. <laughs> Speaking of singers, yeah, a big thanks to Ocean City Defender for what, as always, for doing our music. Oh, for doing our music. Oh, all the musical interstitial stuff. Uh, Though to be fair, out, we uh, sang. That's true. That's true. true. Check him out under Ocean City Defender. Not the game. The musician, K. Preston Merkley. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to all our Olympians. You know winners. what? Just getting here makes you a winner. Just get to the it end does. of the, just and just get to the end of this episode makes us winners. So let's all pat each other on the back. Yeah. Great job. Uh, I'm just I'm just hitting my my tummy because couldn't reach my back. Didn't want to do it. It's audio. <laughs> you don't know and you wouldn't know if I hadn't told you. Cut this part out. <laughs> the magic of podcasts. <laughs>